Question being now put. I'll hear Jacinda Ardern. Mr Chair, it's a shame that my colleague was unable to uh, finish his address, but I'm very pleased to take another call on um, uh, part one of this bill, particularly so we can speak um, to child protection <coughs> policies, which is a significant part of the bill. Uh, but before I go on to that, Mr Chair, it feels like it would be remiss of me not to respond to uh, the Minister's um, contribution after my address. Now, if I did not make it absolutely clear uh, in that first part of my address, let me do it now. Labor is supporting this bill. We have even said that when this government is removed in September, we will continue with the government's action plan on vulnerable children. We have acknowledged and seen the work that has gone into the green paper process, the white paper process, all of the input that has come from the sector into this piece of work has been considerable, and we're not willing to walk away from that. So for the minister to try and somehow imply that we have not supported elements of her work is uh, misleading, uh, but also uh, a politicisation of what otherwise was a reasonable contribution of how our position differs in some areas from this government. So, yes, we support the Vulnerable Children's Bill, but do we think it goes far up? No. And we have said that clearly all along, and it's a reasonable point to make. Because, Mr Chair, child poverty is not to ignore child abuse. But if you ignore child abuse, then you are ignoring wider fundamental issues around child wellbeing. In fact, the government has been at great pains to separate out the issue of child abuse and neglect and vulnerability from issues of child poverty. And we have consistently argued all of the research and all of the evidence says that you cannot separate out issues that cannot be separated out. In fact, it is, we would never, ever in this House, and you will never hear one member of this side of the House ever argue that because you are poor you hurt your children. Of course not. That is a despicable implication to make. But nor can any government that is responsible and looks at the evidence and research ignore the role that poverty plays in vulnerability, that poverty plays in abuse and neglect issues. You cannot separate issues which cannot be separated out. To ignore one is to patently ignore the, the other. Now, if the minister wants to get angry about that, get angry about it. Get angry about the situation. Fair enough. We should all be angry about it. But do not get angry at opposition for raising what research and, and evidence inconveniently has told this government and which they do not wish to be inconvenienced by. It is the cold, hard facts of the matter. But, Mr Speaker, we still support this bill because at least, yes, the government is doing something. We would just like to see uh, more. And that is what we would like to call being ambitious for children. But, Mr Speaker, um, speaking directly to child protection um, policies, uh, I'm pleased that New Zealand First raised some of the issues around how far should those child protection policies go? What about when it comes to vetting and screening the children's workforce? It was something rigorously debated by the Select Committee. Uh, and it was a hard um, point to come to, whether or not, for instance, we should say, look, the state should look to who is contracted, who is um, required by government to provide services uh, as a children's workforce, and then it shouldn't go any further than that. Let's leave it to voluntary organisations to put in place their own uh, policies. Now, to a certain extent, uh, there you, could argue, you could argue that. But we actually had voluntary organisations who said, no, we would feel more comfortable if we were covered as well. Now, we did ask for some advice on uh, what that would look like if that extension went that far, what kind of burden it would place on those voluntary organisations, would they have the capacity to carry that out? They were vulnerable questions. I never felt entirely satisfied by the answers that we were able to produce through that process. 
Uh, so whilst I can understand why the government has come to where they've come to in this bill, I do think that there is some merit in what New Zealand First has said around applying a one narrow element of these provisions and just saying, let's make sure that the safety checks and vets at least apply to the voluntary children's workforce where they are engaged frequently um, in, uh, in that kind of work. And I think it's fair for them, Mr Chair. Uh, John Hayes. I move that the question be now put. The question is that the question be now put. Those of that opinion will say aye. For the contrary, no. The ayes have it. A party vote's called for. Ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National, 59 in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14, 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. Seven votes opposed. <coughs> Māori Party. Two in favour. Mana. One vote opposed. Act New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour. Brendan Horan. Any other votes? Members, the ayes are 63, the noes are 56. The question will be put. First, we have the Minister's amendments as set out on SOP number 435. The question is that the amendments be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. We now move to Jacinda Ardern's amendment to Clause 9 as set out on SOP number 436. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The noes, noes have it. Party votes called for. Ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 opposed. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 in favour. New Zealand First. 7 votes in favour. <coughs> Māori Party. Two opposed. Mana. One in favour. Act New Zealand. One opposed. United Future. One opposed. Brendan Horan. <coughs> Members, the ayes are 56, the noes are 63. The amendment is not agreed to. We now move to a point of order, uh, Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Just to, to enter one correction with regard to the vote on the Minister's SOPs 434 and 435. Uh, MANA records a negative vote in both cases. Uh, we have the Minister's amendment on 435, and the other one was? 434, I think. Was that uh, there is... Was uh, well, that was on the voices, that one. OK. So the one that you're... Um, the Minister's amendments, that was... Just one moment. Was that on the voices? Four, three, four, eight. <laughs> yeah. Um, the... Uh, the Minister's amendments are set out on SOP number 435. We're on the voices. There was no party vote called for, so we can't record a party vote because I've already announced the result. Uh, we're moving to uh, Asanati Lole Taylor's amendment inserting new clause 27A is set out on SOP number 447. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. The noes have it. Aye. Party vote's called for. Ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 opposed. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. 
Green Party, 14 in favour. New Zealand First. Seven votes in favour. Māori Party. Two opposed. Mana, one in favour. Act New Zealand. One opposed. United Future. One opposed. Brendan Horan. Members, the ayes are 56, the noes are 63. The amendment is not agreed to. We now move to Asanati Lolo Taylor's amendment, inserting new clause 27B, as set out on SOP number 447. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. The noes have it. Party votes called for. Ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 opposed. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. New Zealand First. Seven votes in favour. Māori Party. Two opposed. Mana. One vote opposed. Act New Zealand. One opposed. United Future. One opposed. Brendan Horan. Members, the ayes are 41, the noes are 64, the amendment is not agreed to. Members, the question now is that part one is amended, stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no, the ayes have it. Members, the time has come for me to report progress. The House has resumed, Mr Chairman. Mr Speaker, the Committee has considered the Credit Contracts and Financial Services Law Reform Bill and reports it with amendment and divided into the following bills. Credit Contracts and Consumer Finance Amendment Bill, Financial Service Providers Registration and Dispute Resolution Amendment Bill. The Committee has also considered the Vulnerable Children Bill and reports progress. Mr Speaker, I move that the report be adopted. The question is that the report be adopted. Those of that opinion will say aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The Credit Contracts and Consumer Finance Amendment Bill and the Finance Service Providers Registration and Dispute Resolution Amendment Bill are set down for third reading next sitting day. The Vulnerable Children Bill is set down for further consideration in committee next sitting day and the House will stand adjourned until 2 p.m. tomorrow. Good evening, everybody. Good evening.